Number 1. Communicate clearly and often Talking with your spouse is one of the best ways to keep your marriage healthy and successful. Be honest about what you're feeling, but be kind and respectful when you communicate. Part of good communication is being a good listener and taking the time to understand what it is your spouse wants and needs from you. Keep the lines of communication open by talking often and not just about things like bills and the kids. Share your thoughts and feelings. Good communication between couples helps maintain closeness and intimacy. Couples with long-lasting marriages talk to each other without lying, accusing, blaming, dismissing and insulting. They do not stonewall each other, become passive-aggressive or call each other names. The happiest couples are not those who are concerned about who is at fault, as they regard themselves as a unit. What affects one half of the couple affects the other, and what is most important to these couples is that the relationship is healthy. Say beautiful things about your spouse. Tell your spouse that you're thankful for having him or her in your life. Appreciate each other, your relationship, your family and your lives together. Show gratitude when your partner cooks dinner, helps the kids do their homework or does the grocery shopping. It may help to take a few minutes each evening to tell each other at least one thing you appreciated that day. I love you. It consists of three words and is a short statement. It's said to some people occasionally and said to others every day. Voiced out by some people in almost every statement they make while others rarely speak of it. Means a lot to some people and is seen as nothing to others. Preferred to be heard every day by some people while others prefer actions rather than hearing them. Expressed in all kinds of relationships but not always spoken of. The longest word in that statement, love, is not just a four-letter word. It's a feeling of deep affection. It's of the heart, not of the mind. Though it differs, I mean it has different types, but it means the same. No other definition of love would beat the biblical definition. It has been and is the best definition I would recommend to anyone who truly wants to know what love is. Here it is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongs. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it does not have. Love doesn't strut doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sin of others, doesn't reveal when others grovel, take pleasure in the flowering of truth, put up with anything, trust God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love is broad, so when you say to someone, I love you, you should know what it entails. Love can be increased. You read that right. It can. It can also be decreased. Like everything in the universe, love undergoes various changes. Yes, it grows and it diminishes too. Can die. It gets stronger and deeper as time goes by while on the other side it gets weaker and sometimes just fades away. The measure of either is never felt immediately and sometimes it's not felt at all by you but by the other person. Love is needed, grace of life, needed in every aspect and area of life. Love is just the answer. If you're young in marriage or you're old, you can attest to it that you love your spouse. Your love for him or her made you to get married you wouldn't get married if you do not love your spouse. Do you want this love to increase? I'm sure you do not want it to decrease. You enjoy this era of love. You enjoy the atmosphere. You don't want it to ever end. You want it to continue and I tell you, it can also increase. It can be more pleasant than you witness now. Do you want a lasting marriage? Then communication is key.
Declare the love you have for each other. Know the love language of your spouse and communicate it well. The majority of marriages fail, either ending in divorce and separation or devolving into bitterness and dysfunction. Some people have given up on marriage. They had bad experiences in their marriages and filing for divorce is the best option they could think of. But if you want a lasting marriage and do not want divorce as an option, please don't fail to communicate well with your partner. Learn to talk effectively and also learn the art of listening. You want to love in your marriage to increase continually, then this is definitely for you. A marriage based on love and respect does not just happen. Both spouses have to do their part. Number 2. Commitment Commitment is the glue that holds your marriage together. In healthy marriages, there is no judgment, guilt trips or threats of divorce. Healthy couples take their marriage vows seriously and commit to each other without any conditions. It's the unwavering commitment that builds the foundation of stability on which good marriages are built. The commitment acts as a steady, strong presence to keep the relationship grounded. While in the issue of commitment, to remain committed, make time for each other as a couple. With work and family responsibilities, it can be easy to lose the romance fact. Plan special dates, either to go out or just stay at home. If you have children, send them on a play date while you relax, talk and enjoy each other's company. Plan for some personal time. Alone time is just as important as couple time. Everyone needs time to recharge, think and enjoy personal interests. That time is often lost when you're married, especially if you have kids. Go out with friends, take a class or do volunteer work, whatever you find enriching. When you're back together with your spouse, you'll appreciate each other even more. Number 3. Kindness When it comes to maintaining a good marriage, the adage is true. A little kindness goes a long way. Researchers at the University of Washington created a formula for predicting how long marriage would last with a whopping 94% accuracy. The key factors affecting the length of a relationship? Kindness and generosity. While it may seem too simple, just think. Aren't kindness and generosity often the first behaviors encouraged in toddlerhood and reinforced throughout a person's life? Applying kindness and generosity to marriages and long-term committed relationships may be a little more complex, but the basic golden rule should still be applied. Consider how you interact with your spouse. Are you genuinely engaged when he or she talks to you about work or other things you may not be interested in? Rather than turning him or her out, work on how to truly listen to your spouse even if you find the topic of conversation mundane. Try to apply kindness to every interaction you have with your spouse. Kindness, on the other hand, glues couples together. Research has shown that kindness, along with emotional stability, is the most important predictor of satisfaction and stability in a marriage. Kindness makes each partner feel cared for, understood and validated, loved. Number 4. Acceptance People in happy marriages accept their faults as well as those of their partners. They know that no one is perfect, so they take their partner for who they are. People in unhappy marriages, on the other hand, only see faults in their partners. And in some cases, they even project their faults onto their spouse. This is a way of staying in denial about their faults while growing increasingly intolerant of their partner's behavior. The key to accepting your partner for who he or she is, is to accept yourself for who you are. Whether you snore too loudly, talk too much, overeat or have a different sex drive than your spouse, know that these are not faults. Your partner chose you despite your perceived shortcomings and he or she deserves the same unconditional acceptance from you. One of the ways to a healthy and a successful relationship is genuinely accepting partners for who they are. However, most couples fail to recognize this fact because they're too busy looking for perfection or too occupied focusing on their partner's flaws. 
The above mentioned are the four things that will increase love and marriage longevity. This is not to say that a loving marriage cannot be passionate. On the contrary, passion is what vitalizes the relationship. When a couple is passionate, they communicate honestly, resolve conflicts easily, and commit to keeping their relationship intimate and alive.